threat of an EMP event or electromagnetic pulse attack has been brought before Congress as a very real threat to the United States electrical infrastructure. EMPs have been referenced in movies like Ocean's Eleven, The Matrix, and Broken Arrow. In addition, fictional books like Going Home and One Second After use the concept of an EMP attack as a catalyst to create the collapse of society as we know it. In this video, we'll discuss five things you need to know about EMPs and we'll focus on separating fact from fiction. You can show your support for this channel by clicking the like button, sharing on social media, providing feedback in the comments section, and don't forget as a subscriber to click the bell icon below to get updates. Enjoy the video. The knowledge about EMPs has been around for quite some time. In recent years, it has been brought up by both Rick Santorum and Ben Carson in the January 2016 GOP debate as a potential scenario that could happen to the US should such rogue nations such as North Korea or Iran get nuclear capabilities. In this video, we'll discuss five things you should know about an EMP event. Number one, what is an EMP event? Number two, who has this technology? Number three, what would happen if an EMP attack were launched against the United States? How probable is an EMP attack against the United States? And number five, what can be done to prepare for an EMP event? So let's jump in. So what is an EMP? An electromagnetic pulse, also sometimes called a transient electromagnetic disturbance, is a short burst of electromagnetic energy. Such a pulse's origination may be a natural occurrence or man-made and can occur as a radiated electric or magnetic field or a conducted electrical current, depending on the source. EMP interference is generally disruptive or damaging to electrical equipment, and at higher energy levels, a powerful EMP event such as a lightning strike can damage physical objects such as buildings and aircraft structures. Okay, so what does that matter to you? The key concern with EMPs is the effect it has on electronics and our electrical grid. The electrical grid in the United States is not capable of handling such a large-scale EMP or coronal mass injection or CME, which I'll talk about in just a moment. It would take time to recover from such an event as electronic equipment used to control generating units would have to be replaced. Such spare parts are not commonly carried in volume in a power plant for wholesale circuit board replacement. In the case of the electrical transformers for a power grid, the length and intensity of the EMP or CME would be the overriding concern as to whether critical damage to the equipment occurred. The grid is hardened for lightning strikes, but not for large-scale CME or EMP. There's been CMEs in the last 20 years and Canada normally bears the brunt of the problem due to their proximity to the Northern Pole. The concern with an EMP is that if one were used over a city or region, it would possibly destroy all electronics which are not hardened. The word possibly is used as so many factors must come together for an EMP to be a real threat. The distance of travel for an EMP is normally line of sight. However, due to the effects on a power grid, it can travel through a grid to the furthest point, which could be many miles from the event itself. The effects of an EMP were actually experienced on the island of Oahu in Hawaii shortly after 11 p.m. on July 2nd, 1962. It was at this time that a thermonuclear weapon was tested over the Johnson Atoll and the subsequent EMP destroyed around 300 street lights in Oahu. Another natural phenomenon similar to an EMP is a CME, or a coronal mass injection. For this video, we'll discuss on EMPs, but many of the effects of a CME could have the same impact as an EMP. So who has this EMP technology? Well, technically the countries that possess nuclear capabilities have this capability. There are eight sovereign nation states that have successfully detonated nuclear weapons. In order of acquisition of nuclear weapons, these are the United States, the Russian Federation, the United Kingdoms, France, and China. Three states that were not parties to the treaty have conducted nuclear tests, India, Pakistan, and North Korea. Israel is also presumed to have nuclear weapons, though it maintains a policy of deliberate ambiguity regarding this. While there are additional options to deliver an EMP without nuclear weapons, their capabilities are minimal. What would happen if an EMP weapon were used against the United States? As a nation, we have experienced technological leaps and bounds over the last few decades, and our infrastructure has become more and more reliant on these technologies. Farms can now produce crops at 40 times of yield that they could just 100 years ago due to the advancements in equipment, pesticides, and fertilizers. Our power production facilities have become very dependent on computers to run many of the systems as well and are dependent on these modern technologies as we've moved away from the old analog systems. If the electrical infrastructure were to be crippled or completely destroyed, the results would be devastating. Everything you take for granted on a daily basis, food delivery, trucking, sewage, internet, cell phones are all dependent on these systems working. At the moment, very little has been done to harden these systems against any kind of man-made EMP or CM. 
EME. For nations wishing to inflict a large-scale impact on our nation, an EMP weapon would have a profound impact on our nation. While the military has taken steps to harden their equipment against such an event, very little has been done in the civilian population to ensure the equipment that runs a critical infrastructure is protected. If our entire infrastructure were compromised, the systems in place to keep us alive would fail and the recovery could take a significant amount of time, potentially years. What would a successful EMP look like? I would recommend you read the EMP Commission, which I'll provide a download link to in the description below. In the report, it provides a very detailed breakdown of an EMP and what the country needs to do to prepare against this threat. It's a good read, even if you just want to skim through it. And how far would an EMP set us back? Depending on which report you read, the expectation is that 90% of the U.S. population would die within the first 12 to 24 months if the entire grid were to go down. That's something to strongly consider. So how probable is an EMP? In May of 2015, Peter Pry warned Congress that this type of attack on American soil would kill approximately 9 out of 10 people through starvation, disease, and societal collapse. In his scenario, an EMP resulting from a high altitude nuclear detonation, while possible, is not very probable. If someone bent on hurting us were to pull this off, they would need a ballistic missile and nuclear weapons. The missile would need to be an intercontinental ballistic missile that was launched from their soil, or they need to have a platform that was within range of the United States. The probability that a rogue nation or a terrorist group could develop the technology to, in order to pull this off is nearly impossible. There are three primary things that have to be considered. Number one, it requires a sophisticated rocket capable of lifting a payload of nuclear material that could produce an explosion in the hundreds of kilotons or megatons range, which is a significant amount of weight. The nuclear bombs North Korea has been testing are significantly smaller than this. Number two, it requires a ballistic missile that can deliver the payload to a very specific place. Too high and the process of dislodging electrons won't work. Too low and the area that's affected is smaller meaning that it can only affect the city or area detonated over. And number three, it requires a willingness to bear the brunt of the action. If a country like North Korea or Iran were to launch one of these missiles from their country, assuming they could somehow even come up with the technology to pull this off, they would be obvious in a matter of seconds from the time the missile was launched and the satellites detected the launch. At which point countermeasures would be taken with appropriate retaliatory measures, meaning they'd pretty much wipe these nations off the face of the earth. One of my favorite fiction novels regarding EMPs, a book called One Second After. The storyline describes nuclear missiles being launched from container ships around the U.S. Again, as we described above, the probability that a terrorist group or rogue nation could amass this technology to build a rocket capable of delivering a nuclear payload in the exact spot with hundreds of megatons is highly improbable. If I were a betting man, I'd put my money on cyber attacks crippling the U.S. electrical grid. We've already seen this happen around various power plants around the United States. Utilities have had had cyber incidents like ransomware attacks. These type of incidents are increasing in frequency and could be a greater threat in the future. What can be done to prepare for an EMP event? Well, first a grid could be hardened to withstand EMPs. Conservative numbers to harden the grid could be as little as 3% more than existing capital investment for electrical grid upgrades, which would translate to about one to three billion dollars per year. There have been many complaints nationwide on how dilapidated our nation's infrastructure has become. And considering how much money we invest in frivolous programs already, in my opinion, this would be money well spent. You could also build a Faraday cage to house your electrical equipment in. A Faraday cage or a Faraday shield is an enclosure used to block electrical fields. Faraday cages can be made to protect your personal electronics are not that difficult to make. While getting into the specifics of building one of these is beyond the scope of this video, you can easily research online by simply googling how to build a Faraday cage and I plan on creating a video specifically for this in the not so distant future. Hopefully this video gives you a high level of EMPs. I know there's a lot of material in here to digest but the threat of an EMP has been brought up recently within politics, and while the possibility of an EMP strike against our country is possible, I don't really think it's that probable. I always enjoy the community's feedback, so please feel free to drop a line in the comment section below. If you enjoy the video, please feel free to like or share on social media. As always, be safe out there.